Hello guys, welcome back to Let Code once again. So we are in the third episode of API testing, and we are going to learn the Postman in detail. Then followed by, we'll also learn the automation part. Okay. So in our previous video, we have learned what is Postman, how to set up it, and how to do the installation, and a uh, few other things about the Postman. Today, before I mean before getting into the actual topics, I like to take it very slow, and I am focusing most for the beginners. So in this video, we will learn few of the jargons in API. So what is API? As we discussed earlier, it's a protocol. Protocol means, of course, a set of rules that allow software application to communicate with each other. For example, I have one uh, mobile application. Let's say uh, it can it can be like your Zomato or Swiggy, and it does connect with the Google Map, right? So the integration is there. So Google Map is developed by Google, and Zomato is of course by themselves. So but two different software can communicate with each other with the help of api so that is what api and there are uh, endpoint request and response so what is endpoint endpoint is basically a specific url where an application uh, provides access to the resources resource can be like your uh, data or your uh, it can be like your um, the data actually but of course it may it might get differs and there is a request and response request is basically when a message is sent by the client client is uh, like myself now i'm a client where i'm sending a request to another uh, another third party application right so i act as a client and the third party client or the client is i mean third party owner or some provider is going to send me back the response right so that is going to be a response a request and response how does that looks in postman is very simple so for example here this is the endpoint now this endpoint can be splitted into multiple parts we'll talk about that in uh, later videos but for now assume that this is our endpoint the endpoint is nothing but you can consider this as an url and this guy uh, whenever we hit send that means we are sending a request so this thing is happening right some you can see uh, like once i click on this so basically it's like when you go to your browser and type like let go dot in so it takes some time to load right so the that means a request is sent and in return you'll see the web page ui right so in postman of course there won't be any web pages it will be just like more of text so here we got this so this is our response so what is request whenever we hit the send button actually we are hitting or we are targeting the url that is endpoint and when we get the get back the results that is what response so i hope it is clear with request response and also endpoint we'll talk about that more in the upcoming videos but just before starting you should know this specific terms then there are uh http methods are there but mostly we use five of this that is get post put patch and delete as the name suggests mostly you will be understanding but just for the sake get means like when you are trying to fetch for example in this example we are taking a movie list uh, so we are trying to get all the movie list from me from any server so that is what get so when you send a request get request it will give us some uh, data back like it's get means of course it's only read uh, read only mode that means we are not updating their databases we are just fetching the database from their server right and then we have post post is like of course you want to update a movie for example tomorrow i'm going to release a movie called let's code with kaushik so i'm going to update the database or the server right so that is a post action put means if you want to update the entire data for example uh, replacing uh, like the actor the director the producer everything you are replacing you can probably use the put patch is means for example some reason the a producer left the project and another producer is coming so in that case we can use the patch a delete means the movie itself is going to flop we know so we'll just delete the movie so how does it look in postman so here you can see like before the end point you can see there are several actions so get uh, post put patch delete and apart from that we have hidden options so these are like advanced mostly we don't use but uh, of course for uh, learning purpose i will give you a demo in the upcoming videos then we have data formats so data formats can be uh, sent as a body or else in the we get the uh, response as well for example in this scenario you can see the response type is json based on the application so some application supports json some application supports xml so this will be like xml format even some support like uh, html javascript raw hex base64 so based on the 
application how the developers have developed based on their requirement so the output might vary from application to application okay so uh, json is there mostly uh, json and xml is used but nowadays mostly people prefer to json because it's very lightweight and it's also uh, easy to readable compared to the xml and of course there are form encoded which will be like key and value for, uh, format for example here if you go to the body here you can select like form data is there right so we can just key and value it's it's going to be similar to your uh, javascript object i can say not perfectly but similar type like your env files where you have environment name and environment variable right so similar things we can uh, pass it as a form encoded then of course the authentication on authorization so apis are like uh, free ap free public apis are there where we don't have to give any authentication but for example let's say our client uh, office uh, client related works of course there will be authentication and authorization right authentication is verifying the identity of a user for example if i log in with my username and password i i will know like i am authenticated i have the valid credentials so i am authenticated authorization is when uh, what actions I can do so I can probably I have only read only access or I can comment uh, something like that if you are if you have admin access you can control everything you can add user you can delete user you can modify user right so authorization is like what permissions do you have and authentication is like uh, who you are okay and then we have this API key uh, so most applications uh, gives us the API key which will be in the format of uh, like uh, uh, what was that I forgot so if you go to the authorization here, you can see like uh, we have like basic auth eBR tokens. So API tokens will be mostly like your BR tokens. And then we have like a JWT bearer, digest auth, OAuth 1, OAuth 2, and a lot of uh, things are there. API, API key is also there, right? So you can just pass your key value and based on that, it will generate the API key. So there are different types of authorizations are authentication and authorization are there. We'll see based on the application and then OAuth OAuth considered to be secured uh, uh, in terms of like application so it's basically mostly used by the third party applications for example um, when we uh, sign in in any application most of the applications it will ask you to do the google sign it or google sign in or the uh, sso sign in right so all those are, belongs to the OAuth and then of course as discussed the bearer token is there okay and there are few uh, not few there are a lot of status code are there mostly we use the series like 200 400 and 500 so 200 okay means of course it's a success 201 means it's a created and then others you can just take a screenshot mostly we will stick to this but of course based on the application based on the requirement there might be different types of status code as well status codes are same for any application but how the developer has built how the application behaves so based on that the uh, um, number of status code will increase but the status code is uh, universal like if i'm seeing 200 that means of course it's okay if i seeing 201 that means the data is created okay then there are a few of the api types so like a uh, rest uh, soap graphql so we have discussed in the uh, first video itself uh, different types of there mostly we'll stick to the rest and probably if i have time i will go with the graphql and then we have rate limiting and throttling rate limiting is like the maximum number of api requests allowed within a time period for example uh, recently uh, if you are using ai chat gpt you might have seen the chat gpt 4 uh, version where uh, we can use it for like few number of messages once the uh, once the uh, data is over once the number of messages are over uh, it will ask you to wait for certain times so that you can use the gpt4 version or else it will downscale to the gpt3 versions like that right so that is rate limiting it will just reduce the number of uh, request allowed within a certain period and throttling throttling is like temporarily uh, reducing the number of api requests allowed for example you take your uh, geo network or atl network where we have like a one two or three gb based on the research we do right so per day the maximum is three gb once the three gb data data quota is over it will reduce the speed to 64 kbps right so that is the throttling speed okay i mean speed in terms of network but that is actually throttling and then we have the headers headers in, in the headers we can pass like content type and authorization content type is basically we can set like uh, the whatever we are going to receive or whatever we are going to send is going to be like in the form of application json or a, a, uh, xml or any other format 
similarly if you want to pass the authorizations of course we will pass the token api so in the headers we pass the authorization uh, where do we see in the postman is very simple so if you go to this here in the headers you can say like we have key and value and of course there are always a default uh, six headers like uh, the postman token the host user agent accept accepting encoding connections so based on the uh, like here i'm using postman but if you are using some other uh, tools the headers might get different but of course there will be always a default uh, headers so we don't have to worry so these are default so whatever we have to pass we should be concerned on that and then we have the error handling error handling uh, like uh, uh, we get the error response and retire logic so error response is basically how the way we built the application so for example uh, if you if you go to our this slide so if not found means if the resource is not found means we will get 404 the status code and the meaning is going to be same but the message we are going to pass can be designed based on the application needs okay and then we have that's it okay so there is also another term called item potency or item potency something like that i just forgot it not forgot i not able to pronounce it properly so um, yeah api what is this this one adm uh, apm idem potency i pronounce it properly i guess so this is also one thing uh, in uh, mostly in api uh, we'll see this so this is basically like uh, idem potency means idem idem pot potency it means that multiple identical requests produce the same result as a single request. We'll talk about this later in the video. So it will need some practical exam to do the demonstration. I will try to do it. Okay. So that's it for this video. If you have any queries, feel free to ask me in the comments. And I will try to upload more videos frequently uh, as I got some time now. Okay. So that's it for my videos. If you have any queries, yeah, I already told that. So ta-da, bye-bye. Take care.